It's coffee time, it's coffee time, it's the one pot chef drinking coffee in time. That's the crappiest intro ever. Welcome to Coffee Time, the monthly chat show here on the One Pot Chef blog where I answer questions sent in by you. If you've got a question for next month's Coffee Time, simply leave them in the comment section down there below on YouTube. Now before we get started on the questions, just a little update based on the last episode of Coffee Time. I did an experiment with an egg timer to try and shorten the episodes, mainly because I got a lot of feedback from you guys saying that the episodes were getting too long and personally I felt the same thing as well because I don't want to be sitting here for an hour recording a video every month. So I gave it a go. And it seems the overwhelming majority of you thought that was a bad idea, that you prefer to have longer episodes. So egg time is gone, Donna Hay can go to hell. <laughs> that only makes sense to people who actually saw the last video, but anyway. Um, yeah, so there will be no more timers or anything like that. I'm just going to try and be as brief as possible with each question and try to get through. That being said, there seems to be a lot less um, questions this month mainly because I think a lot less people watched the video last month because it was a shorter one. So hopefully this will turn things around. Okay, so let's get into the questions. And the first one comes from Jack Wilkins, who asks, what's the strangest meal you've ever had? Um, I don't know. Probably, this is a bit of an in-depth story, but it's kind of funny. Um, when I was a kid in the mid-1980s, my parents and I went overseas on an overseas trip and we went to the United Kingdom, we went to Singapore and one of the places we went to was Soviet Russia. Now, I think I've mentioned trip to Soviet Russia before, it was a very strange place to say the least, but one of the things that was really weird about it was the plane trip there. We went from London to the Soviet Union, to Moscow, and we went via the Russian airline Aeroflot, which these days is pretty bad. I mean, like the advertising slogan is you've got a better than 50% chance of getting to where you actually want to go without crashing into a mountain. But back then they were pretty awful as well. And I remember that they served breakfast on the plane and the breakfast consisted of some cold roast chicken, a little bowl of what looked like brown jelly, which was actually some kind of solidified gravy, and a little bottle, which my mother took away instantly, and it turned out it was actually a miniature bottle of vodka. That has got to be one of the weirdest, weirdest meals that I'd ever seen. And yeah, it was, <laughs> it pretty much symbolised everything about Aeroflot. So yeah, that, that would be the weirdest. Um, let's see... Uh, Michelle Jobert, I think that's how it's pronounced. Did the flood do any damage to your home? I hope not. No, we didn't get any major damage. It's, it's sort of like a stormwater drain that runs past the side of the house, but all it takes is more than a few millimetres of rain and it will overflow. And it didn't do any damage, although it did go through the roots of the trees on the side of the drains there, it really needs, somebody needs to do something like the council because like it's ridiculous to expect the property owner to fix something that doesn't belong to them, belongs to the council. But yeah, we didn't get any damage, which was lucky. So it could have been a lot worse. I'm just so glad that it managed to go down fairly quickly before it really did do some major damage. Uh, another one from Michelle. Uh, last coffee time you said you were on the way to being happy after all the hectic times around your house. Are you increasingly happy now? Hope so. Um, I think I probably am on the way to being happy. As, as I say, it's it's been absolutely hectic. You can see I've got little zits on my face. This only seems to happen when I'm really stressed and there's been a lot of stuff going on in the background of the One Pot Chef show recently, most notably the fact that I've gone over to three videos a week, which has exponentially increased the amount of work that I have to do. I've got more filming, I've got more editing, I've got more planning, uh, more shopping to go and get ingredients. Plus, all of the back end stuff with the business and whatnot. So I'm busy and I'm stressed out, but I'm feeling good because I'm actually doing something that I love. And while it does come with all these sort of optional extras like stress and tension and all that sort of stuff, I'm, I'm enjoying it. So that's good. Um, said the redhead eight says, Oh my God, David, I'm so tired of reading Never Trust a Skinny Chef. Does this drive you nuts too? 
I think I've seen that comment on my cooking videos about a billion times since I started making cooking videos on YouTube, and you know what? It means nothing to me. It's obviously meant to be a compliment, so I can live with that. So, um, as long as they're not calling me a fat poofter, I think I'm all right. <laughs> um, Thunderhawk. Okay. Thanks for answering my question about being a YouTube partner. One thing I have trouble with is getting my videos around. I sometimes think of asking someone like yourself just to give me a shout out and share my videos to your followers, but I wouldn't expect that from you unless you really wanted to. How do you suggest I get my videos more known? I share it on Facebook, but that's the only place I share it. I feel like if I try to share them on YouTube, people will just flag it as spam. Okay, this is where a lot of people fall down, is that they often think that sort of like you dump it on Facebook, you dump it on Twitter, and then you expect it to go viral overnight. Um, the reality is that a huge amount of people discover videos and channels through the comment section. Putting a comment on somebody's video like that, you would be surprised how many people will click on your username to check out your videos and you suddenly get new subs through there. It happens to me all the time when I comment on other people's videos and it's not like I go out and say, hey, check out my videos or anything, but I'm actually putting genuine comments on people's videos going, oh, I love this video. Oh my God, that was funny, blah, blah, blah. Because catch people's attention, they click on your thing and they go from there. You would be surprised once you start putting comments and stuff everywhere, how quickly you start to develop an audience. And that's how it sort of spirals on because when you get people through there, they subscribe to your channel, they start watching your videos, they start sharing it with their friends on Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm still getting over chest cold. <clears throat> but yeah, um, it sort of spirals from there. But you really, basically it all comes from being part of the YouTube community by getting involved and talking to people and interacting and it goes from there. So give it a go. Uh, oh, another couple of questions from Thunderhawk. <clears throat> Is YouTube your full-time job? Are you willing to tell us how much you make from YouTube? I don't have a job and I'm thinking of if I can get some views on YouTube, I can make some extra money. Okay, yes, YouTube is my full-time job. I set up a business in order to run YouTube as an actual business. I make videos full-time now. I cannot tell you how much I earn because I have a non-disclosure agreement with Google and YouTube, so I am legally not allowed to discuss it. That being said, I am making enough money to live on. I wouldn't say I was rich, but I am certainly doing reasonably well, so that's how we go with that. Um... I would say that if you're looking to try and make money from YouTube, the first thing you do is you concentrate on the content, get it really high quality, make sure people want to watch it, uh, and try not to focus too much on the money side of things because if you're thinking that you're going to get like a couple of videos up and become Ray William Johnson overnight, it's never going to happen. This, what I'm doing here now, my cooking videos, this channel, is literally the work of five years before I finally got to a point where it was actually something that could be run as a business. So don't think it's going to happen overnight. You need to put in the hard work. You have to put in the hours. You have to really, really work for it. So instant success just doesn't exist on YouTube unless you get some ludicrous shout out from some person with 2 million subs. Like that is unlikely to happen. So that's how it goes. Um, Thunderhawk, do you think the appearance of food is important. I often make the most delicious foods, but they look like poo. Literally, watch my cinnamon cloud recipe, you will know what I mean. Um, I think if you're making cooking videos, to say the least, I think it's very important that the food is presented in a fairly presentable manner. So um, even if it's just a matter of getting some nice plates, like a, I've got some nice white dinner plates that I use for display when I'm making my cooking videos. Make sure you've got some decent lighting to make sure that it brings up all the colours and everything of the food. And just be very careful about how you put it onto the plate or the bowl or whatever. And just do your best to try and make it as presentable as possible because if you can get a decent image of it on video or with a customised thumbnail if you become a partner, um, that is very, very important because having really nice looking food is the key to getting people in checking out your videos. So absolutely. Um, uh, let's see. Can you do a whole wheat rye yeast bread recipe? I made bread in my bread machine with equal parts whole wheat, whole rye and quinoa flour. 
which I added Vital Wheat Gluten to, and it still didn't rise. Any suggestion? I am rubbish at bread. I'll be honest with you. I had a bread maker once, and I threw it out because I... The, I find them unreliable. I think, what like, for every, like, two loaves of bread you get that are really, really good, you'll also get three loaves of bread that are not very good at all. Um, I actually used my bread machine to make jam once. That was about as much as I really got use out of it. So, um, I've never been terribly good at bread, so, um... I might do some investigation and see if I could show people how to make some bread, but um, I, I generally try to avoid it because it's like, unless it's like sort of like little bread buns or something like that or spirals and stuff, which I've done before in other videos. Um, yeah, I tend not to be a big bread person. I'm just not a bakery kind of guy. <laughs> uh, Go Metric Today asks, how, would, how much could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? <laughs> You did that deliberately, so I couldn't say it. Um, I don't know what a woodchuck is. I, I, I've i always heard that thing of a woodchuck, chuck, if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Oh, I said it. Hey! Um, yeah, I had no idea what a woodchuck is. I always thought it was some kind of Boy Scout type thing, and I'm there wondering why they chuck wood. So, like, maybe it's like a competition where they get logs and throw them at each other, and whoever throws the most logs wins. I, I, I'm not really sure. Um, my brain hurts. <laughs> Uh, Lucy Lou TV, um, those of us who have been on YouTube for a while know how you got your start, achieved partnership, etc. We would like to know how has YouTube in general changed your life and with all the recent changes to the YouTube partnership program, how will that affect your income? Okay, um, well, it's changed my life because I'm financially independent now. I mean, before... Um, a lot of people don't realise I was a disabled pensioner because of my spinal injury. Um, I wasn't able to work. I wasn't able to find anyone who was willing to take on somebody with a spinal injury because they all think, oh, insurance problems. So generally, I was looking at a life of financial dependence with the government, and I think that's terrible. But I wanted to do something that would allow me to sort of be independent on some level. And so I started doing YouTube and I was having fun with it. And when the opportunity came to become a partner, I jumped at it and I worked hard and I did the best I could. And I sort of got there and it's, it's good. So like, I'm, I'm still have to work a little bit harder and get there, sort of try and get myself a bit more sort of stable financially. But I think we're doing pretty well. Um, with the latest changes, it's, it's been bad over the last few months because it's sort of gone real, like, up and down like you wouldn't believe. But um, it's one of the reasons I increased the amount of videos I was doing because I needed to basically booster up my income from YouTube because it was getting to the point where just doing the same old, same old was not going to help continue the One Pot Chef show. In fact, it was probably going to bury it. So... Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly had a few sort of ups and downs. I think half the problem is, and I'll probably do a separate video about this, but half the problem is the changes to the front page. The, the new sub box with that stupid highlights feature, that is killing people's channels. And I think it's about time that YouTube finally pulled the plug on it and admitted that they screwed up. Because seriously, they have fucked up so many partners. Apologise for my language, but you have no idea how much this has caused damage to, other, to people out there who are trying to make this a living for themselves or who indeed do make a living out of it. So hopefully YouTube will come to their senses. Oh, would you look? <laughs> um, MUFC Air. Have you ever done or considered doing skydive or parachute jump? I have had the longing to do it for ages now and I have to find the courage and the money to finally do it. Um, there is no way in hell that I would ever go skydiving or parachute jump or anything like that. I don't care if the plane's about to crash. I will crash in the plane rather than jump out of it. Um, I have an absolute deathly terror of heights. And I watched an episode of The Amazing Race recently where they were in New Zealand on the world's tallest bungee jump. It was like, I don't know, nine, 900 kilometres above the earth or whatever, some ridiculously high amount. And I couldn't watch it. I literally had to fast forward through it and not watch that section because it was like, bleh, it just made me sort of shudder. I just couldn't do it. So no way in hell. If that's what you want to do, feel free. Go for your life. I say pursue your death dreams. 
Um, uh, M.U. Unlim, have you ever used two pots frequently? And there's one particular smartass out there who feels the need to repeatedly remind me of it when I use more than one pot in my videos. And so, like, the whole idea of one pot chef was that I was trying to suggest that you don't need to have a huge amount of kitchen equipment in order to do my recipes. It wasn't actually a literal thing of I cook everything with just one pot because that's, like, ludicrous. It's impossible to do for most recipes. But um, either that or the one recipes that you could do with it, I'd just have to do the same thing over and over and it would get very boring very quickly. Um, Yoshi the Kid 18, were you a crazy hyperactive kid when you were younger? Um, not that I recall. No. Uh, although I did apparently have an allergic reaction to some asthma medication when I was a kid, which made me hyperactive briefly. But, um, that was it. Yeah, I've never had any sort of hyperactive tendencies, I don't think. Um, the Hillsman 25. Have you got a bread making machine? If so, can you do some videos, please? Oh, we've been there. Now, I, I had one years ago, um, and... I got it cheap because it was the last one in the shop and it was not very good. I, 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 I figure sort of like when it comes to bread makers, like they make a very small loaf of bread and the amount it costs to make it is just not worth the effort. Like I would rather go five minutes down the road to the local bakery and pay them to make it for me. It's cheaper and it's fresher and I don't have to do any of the washing up. So... It's, it's nice to make it occasionally, I suppose, but, like, it's only if you actually know what you're doing. Well, I've, I've never been a good big bread maker, so, um, yeah. Uh, 3333 Jasmine. If you were stuck on an island and could only take one recipe, what would it be? Um, I don't really know. Um, I suppose it depends on what they have on the island that I can cook with. Um, <laughs> or do I get to take the ingredients with me? Um... I don't know, because I, I'm one of those people that doesn't like to eat the same thing over and over. I would get bored very quickly with that, because, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I would get quite bored. Like, if I, like, I'm currently going through a big pasta thing at the moment. Like, I made this pa pasta boscaiala recently, and I put it up on YouTube, and, God, it was yummy. And I'm trying to avoid making it frequently, because I know I'll get bored with it very quickly, and it's really, really nice. So, um, I don't know. Probably just a whole bunch of pasta and just season it with whatever bananas and plankton or whatever the hell they have on islands. I don't know. I avoid going to islands. <laughs> um, Maggie twelve thirty one zero. My question is: boxes, briefs, or perhaps lady panties? <laughs> you know, I love to open myself up to YouTube and answer all sorts of questions, but you know what? That one I'm going to leave because I think I should be just a little bit of a man of mystery. So I'll just leave it to your imagination what I wear. And yeah, I'll just say they're black. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fuller Grey 78. Um, also I asked in the last coffee time, but there wasn't time for my question. If I sent you some amazing Estonian chocolates, would you do a video of tasting each and every everyone and comment. I'd like that so much and greetings to special Topaz. Ah, Topaz says hello too. She's currently in the garden um, coughing up fur balls. So um, <laughs> yes, um, I've got a postal address on my channel page so if you'd like to send me some Estonian chocolates that would be very lovely of you and I would be very happy to do a video. I must admit I have absolutely no knowledge of the Estonian language. I don't even know what language you speak in Estonia, so it should be very interesting to see what you send me, because, like, it'll be in some weird language that I don't necessarily speak, so I'll just have to guess at what it is you've sent me. So that'll be quite fun. I think that'll be entertaining. So, yes, if, you, if you'd like to do that, would be very generous of you, and thank you very much. Um, Groshoni1. Dear One Pot Chef, do you support the ownership of firearms for sporting hunting uses? Um, I've never seen how using guns to hunt down, well, hunting animals in any description is a sport. I've always considered that to be a bit weird. Like, back in the days when sort of like hunting for animals was all about food and clothing and like sort of protecting your family and stuff like that, then yes, that was... An acceptable thing but I question these days if any of that is still relevant and 
I, I've always thought the idea of hunting with guns and stuff like that is, is about as unsporting as it gets. Um, personally, I don't think that anyone should have weapons except for um, the authorities. I, I've always, like, I know a lot of Americans will sort of say, oh, but I've got the right to do it because of the whatever declaration of independence or some bollocks i don't know i don't i'm getting to lose my american audience over that but yeah um i think the days of the being afraid of the king of england coming around and stealing your land are well and truly over so i think the sort of like the whole idea of having the right to bear arms is a bit sort of outdated i don't think it's necessary so um yeah i i, I can't say i've supported it that much so no um next question tony the night owl you always lift my spirits. I love these coffee time vids. It allows us to get to know our favourite YouTube chef. Aww. Your honesty is very refreshing. What you see is what you get. Question. Would you consider this job of making videos the most satisfying job you've ever had? Do you love what you do? Hands down, best job ever. I have had some crap jobs in my life. You have no idea. Um, I have scrubbed toilets. I've worked in service station convenience stores. I have, was once briefly the Easter Bunny in which I got to wear a giant furry crash helmet on my head for about eight hours a day in 40 degree heat while getting kicked in the crotch by three year olds. Um, I've even done telemarketing, which is one of the worst jobs in the universe. Um, so this is hands down my favorite job of all time. And it's so great because I get to do what I love. I get to work from home. I get to set my own hours. And I get to be creative. I mean, how much more could you possibly ask for in a job? So I absolutely do love what I do. So, yes. Jill M. DeJesus. Have you ever gone camping? And if so, did you enjoy it? Um, I've gone camping a couple of times. And I've got to be honest, I am not a na nature person. I, I hate nature and everything it stands for. Um, if I want to go on a holiday, I want to go to a nice clean hotel room with a big screen TV and a free bottle of champagne and, I don't know, someone to come around and give me a massage. That's lovely. Going camping is nothing like that. Going camping is squatting next to a tree, taking a crap while people walk past in bloody bush, bloody walking gear and crap like that and sticks. I mean, that's just creepy and wrong. Um, yeah, I, I can't say I enjoyed the camping that we did in the past ages ago I went with my current partner and it it was one of those times where sort of like you do it once to say you've done it and we ended up going another time and we gave up after about 12 hours and actually drove 100 kilometers to the nearest hotel <laughs> so um yeah it wasn't the best experience so yeah um I can't say I would go and do it again unless it sort of came like a, a proper like I say a proper camping thing with like like going with cabins and showers and stuff like that. Because seriously, being outside for three days straight, sleeping on grass and not having access to proper toilet or shower facilities, not great when you get home. You stink. It's terrible. So let's see. SF Music 100. My hubby has been talking about us taking a vacation to Australia, but I've been resistant to the idea I always think of Aussies as being so active and fit and being a big boy myself, I don't think I would fit in with all the sun-worshipping Greek gods that I imagine populate Australia. Am I being paranoid or is my fear justified? As a gay man of size, how welcome, comfortable will I feel in Australia? Um, I guess it depends on what you're looking to do. I mean, if you're just coming as a tourist, like... I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue. If you're looking on going some weird sort of sex holiday, then you might have run into a few issues. But then again, there's a huge bear community in Australia. I, I must admit, I'm not really much of a getting involved in the gay community these days. I used to run a nightclub many years ago, and I think I've got my gay overload. So I don't really have any major connections to the gay community these days. But I do know that there is a big bear community in Sydney. Um, I think it's Harborside Bears. I think is one of the local organisations and they run lots of social activities for those larger gay men such as myself. Um, there's plenty of places to go. It's just a matter of jumping onto some of the gay websites on the internet and getting some information, tourist information. I'm sure there's a gay Australian gay tourism website somewhere um, and just try and get some information from them and they can give you some pointers as to 
what points of interest you should definitely go for. So I don't know. Um, that that would be my advice. Is I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue if you're looking to sort of just come to Australia for a tourism thing and then maybe go to a few gay clubs here and there. There are definitely places to go and not to go, just like any country, I would say. So um, do your research, I would say. That, was, that would be my advice, is do a little bit of research beforehand. Um, Cheeky Monkey 6. Uh, seeing as you've turned down my marriage proposal, what say you come over to England to be my live-in chef? Of course, being a student, I am flat-ass broke, but could pay you in smiles and laughter. Deal? <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if that would be necessarily a equal partnership on that one. I mean, I get to cook for you and you get to give me smiles and laughter. Um, <laughs> I would very much expect you to be doing the washing up at the very least. And yes, uh, as for the marriage proposal, I'm, my partner is the jealous type and he'll come after you something crazy. <laughs> Um, next question. I like Cookie88. I love that username. Have you ever tried pickles and peanut butter? It's amazing. Ugh. Peanuts and peanut... Uh, pickles and peanut butter. That That has got to be one of the weirdest combinations. Oh my god, yuck. I, I, I couldn't even conceive of that. I'm not a huge fan of pickles to begin with, but I don't think peanut butter would improve them. Um, Emmy Gallon. If spices encapsulate personalities, what spice would you be and why? Cinnamon. Because I'm constantly underestimated. <laughs> I love being enigmatic. Yeah, that, that would be my answer. And you can read into that what you will. Because <laughs> I'm certain, I'm certain there's a few people out there who will know what I'm talking about. Um, Armination. Okay. It drives me crazy to see that you never fry the onions till they're golden brown. You miss a lot of flavour. And what about making a Facebook account for the sexy red whisk of death? I would love that. Um, okay. I'm not sure what you're going on about the onions. You don't have to absolutely fry onions till they're golden brown for every recipe. I do in some recipes, but not every single one. Sometimes just softening them is enough. Um, you're more than welcome to brown them if you wish to, but... I don't think it's absolutely necessary for every particular recipe. As for a Facebook account for the for Sexy Red Whisk of Death, um, I have enough trouble trying to maintain a personal Facebook account, a One Pot Chef account, Twitter, Google+, Plus, YouTube accounts, and everything else. The last thing I need is another one. <laughs> My, I'm having enough trouble trying to sort of figure out how to switch between the two as it is. So I'm increasingly becoming schizophrenic because of, like, Sometimes I'm David and sometimes I'm One Pot Chef and sometimes it's hard to tell which one is which these days, so adding a third one to the mix would be very confusing. <laughs> um, I don't know, Productions. Please make a video of you wearing a pretty little yellow dress. You would look adorable. Um, <laughs> I think my days of cross-dressing are well and truly behind me and... That's as far into that subject as I'm prepared to go. <laughs> Cowballs, why are your videos so damn addicting? Oh, because I add a little bit of love, sunshine and heroin into every little bite. Um, <laughs> for Amel, have you, ever oh, have you ever thought about making an epic mealtime style video? Um, no, I've never even considered it because I, I was briefly subscribed to Epic Meal Time, but I I don't consider their channel to be a cooking channel. It's more of an entertainment channel and it's kind of repetitive. Like there's only so many times you can see them make some ludicrous thing out of ten kilos of bacon or whatever. It's it's just I just don't see it as particularly entertaining and I wouldn't really feel the need to reproduce it because I, I kind of see it as rather wasteful what they do so um plus i i like to take a lot of my videos fairly seriously because i i'd like to think that i'm helping people to, to show them how to actually cook things and i i don't see what they do and what i do as being reasonably compatible so probably not i probably wouldn't do it um michelle anderson what does a youtube partner mean 
Okay, if you go to youtube.com slash partners, it'll explain it all, but essentially a YouTube partner is someone who gets to monetize their videos. They get to have advertising next to their videos and on their videos, and they earn a portion of revenue from that advertising. Um, it also, if you're one of the original partners like myself, not like the, because they recently changed how the partner system works, but if you're one of the older partners, you also get additional features on YouTube, like you get to select the thumbnail image for each of your videos and things like that. So, um, that sort of thing. But, um, that's basically what the partnership program is all about, but you can actually read the full details on youtube.com slash partners. Uh, Wendy Taylor, and this is the last question. I've told you there wasn't many this time. Have you ever had the Elvis, a grilled peanut butter, banana and bacon sandwich? What is your favourite guilty late night snack? Will Great Britain's colours ever be removed from the Australian flag? Lots of love coming from, from you, or for you, from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Uh, the Elvis, a grilled peanut butter, banana and bacon sandwich. I can honestly say I have never had that. And it sounds like a terrible combination. I'm, 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 I, I would probably try it out of curiosity, but I can honestly say I, I have never, never tried that. And it's, it sounds very strange. Um, what is your favorite guilty late night snack? Um, I don't have any guilty late night snacks because I've never felt guilty about late night snacking because... I'm one of those people who doesn't tend to stick to the three meals thing. I tend to have little meals throughout the day. And so I sort of graze now and again, because like I very rarely have a one big meal. I tend to have little bits throughout the day and that's works better for me energy level wise. But, um, I, I like to have a sandwich at night, at late night, usually sort of with cheese or, um, I don't know, probably some like shaved ham or something like that. Just sort of, Nothing heavy, but um, it's nice to have a sandwich at night. Sort of sit there and a bit of mustard on it. Yum. Um, will Great Britain's colours ever be removed from the Australian flag? Um, probably not, because although there is a big sort of... Well, there was a big movement for the idea of Australia becoming a republic, I think most people acknowledge that it's an expensive waste of time because Australia is as much a republic now as it would be. So, because we are fairly independent, it's not like... Britain controls anything. We have our own parliament, we have our own politicians, and while our head of state, the Governor General, is supposedly the Queen's representative in our country and is technically in charge, um, the reality is she's very much just a figurehead. She's just ceremonial more than anything else. She rarely has any actual control over the way the government is run or anything like that. So. Um, I think most people acknowledge that sort of like the idea of having to go over and become a republic would cost an absolute fortune because anything that's called Royal Australian blah blah blah, all the money would have to change, all the anything that has sort of references to the Commonwealth or anything would have to be changed. It would cost billions to do, and frankly, it would serve zero purpose because it wouldn't be any more independent than we are now. So, I don't see it happening anytime soon. And with that. Coffee time comes to an end. How long was this one? Well, 33 minutes. Good grief. That's a rather small one today. Oh, well, you'll have to give me lots more questions this time. And unfortunately, we didn't get one from Cooking with Karma this month because probably she's still hiding in shame from the last weird question she asked me. <laughs> anyway, lots of love to you all. Please get your questions in for next month's coffee time and I shall get back to you very soon. Lots of love to you all and love you.